the Clyde. A name, a reputation and a brand, famous around the world. Glasgow made the Clyde and the Clyde made Glasgow. A phrase tinged with nostalgia and oft quoted by Glaswegians. But what does the river mean to Glasgow folk in 2023? The Clyde is one of the great rivers of the world. It's, uh, it was formerly very, very heavily industrialised, right from the Firth shipyards coming up through the biggest city in Scotland. The river has changed so much, but now one of the things I'm interested in is wildlife. And we can be out rowing and see herons, otters, kingfishers. The river's almost like another element. You go outside and you feel the sunshine and you feel the wind and when you go on the water, you feel the water underneath you. The West Boat House on Glasgow Green was built in 1905 by Glasgow Corporation for Clydesdale and Clyde Amateur Rowing Clubs. When the clubs were founded in the mid-1800s, rowing was the most popular sport in the city. Local newspapers regularly reported crowds of up to 30,000 people lining the riverbanks for regattas. The boathouse's location beside the tidal weir on Glasgow Green was no accident. This masterpiece of Victorian engineering, built in 1901, was designed to control the flow of the river and protect the bridges and quayside downstream. A happy byproduct of this was the creation of a flat, non-tidal surface upstream, perfect for rowing. Positioning the building beside the weir meant the rowers could take full advantage of the six kilometre long rowing reach from the weir to the Cunninger Loop, but it came at a price. The riverbanks here were steep and prone to subsidence. A.B. Macdonald, the city engineer, was tasked with designing the building. His solution was ingenious. From the outside, the building looked like a solid and substantial stone building, but it hid a secret. It was really a big wooden shed. A lightweight box pinned to the riverbank with deep timber piles that could move and flex with the natural movement of the riverbank. By the mid-2010s, the building was in a perilous state. The timber foundations had rotted away, the exterior render was collapsing, the roof leaked and the facilities left much to be desired. In 2015, Glasgow Building Preservation Trust, a charity that rescues and repairs historic buildings, began working with the rowing clubs and Glasgow City Council to explore options to save the building. After several years of hard work and generous funding from the National Lottery Heritage Fund, Historic Environment Scotland, Glasgow City Council and many others, the £2.8 million rejuvenation of the West Boat House project got underway. Because of the unique nature of this B-listed building um, and the timber frame, there's a lot of negotiation and planning that has to go through with the architects, Historic Environment Scotland, Building Control and the funders just to make sure that all the repairs are being done in a proper conservation manner. I think the important thing with this building in terms of what we are looking to conserve, it is this rather unusual structure, the, the timber structure. Uh, and the fact that it is virtually intact, it's all there, all the timber finishes, the linings on the interior walls and things like that are all there. And that with the new build, we will be able to express those things and they will still be there. And that so much of that original material is there and we can use it and it can be the backdrop to the new rejuvenated boathouse. One of the exciting moments when construction work first started was the internal wall which had divided the clubs since the built house was built in 1905 was taken down and we could fully see what the space was going to be like and how the two clubs were going to work together for the future of the building. I think the most surprising thing about the job so far is the robustness of the structure and, and now that everything internally is removed you can see what's left and in areas it's, it's amazing what's still standing in reality and it's just a testament to how the structure as itself is, has been originally built and is very, very stiff. We want to try and keep as much of the structure as possible, much timber as possible and there are two options. One, you remove it and you replace it with a light for light timber or two, we can go down a modern route of epoxy porn resins. That's keeping the, the same structure and as much of the previous timber in the building as possible. 
on the rafters and joist repairs, um, the ones that you can see above our head just now were decayed, so the only way around about it for that section there was to supplement joists and rafters onto the side of them. When working on these support beams for the balconies, they were in a very poor state. The ends of these were totally gone at the end, but the other ones that are really totally renewed, they were actually that bad, they can't be reused. They actually could pull them out by hand. The most difficult bit on it was pr probably to cut these out to keep them in the same shape as the originals because the thickness of them and the density of the timber was quite hard to cut the shape out. And then they're obviously cutting the grooves out here without going right through by hand. It was quite hard as well. So it's nice to work on old timbers and obviously try and retain as much of the original bone as you can. Running alongside the repair and restoration of the West Boat House was an extensive community engagement programme. Right from the start we wanted to take a kind of more holistic approach so it wasn't just about the building and the conservation work, it was about where that building sits within that wider social, cultural context and also you know, it sits on a river, so it made sense to kind of tie it in with that and, and think about the river in a bit more depth. So we had a really broad range of activities. We've done a lot of nature walks, citizen science works. We had a big uh, sporting heritage mapping project, photography workshops and photogrammetry workshops, workshops with Clyde River Foundation. So we worked a lot with Glasgow Disability Alliance and, and right from the outset of the project we had this boat building project with Archipelago Folk School who are boat builders and we made two small skiffs, model boat building as well. They were also heavily involved with the flag design and flag making workshops. Today is a second workshop which is contributing to the design of the flag which will be flown over the boathouse and its official launch. It's that kind of longer term partnership working between GDA and the Boathouse and it's, it has allowed people to kind of do um, more of a, a substantial long term project which is all kind of based around the river but it's got so many different aspects to it because there's the boat building but then also got the river running through Glasgow Green which has then brought in the nature aspect and the, the built environment. Clyde in the Classroom is a, a very simple project which basically takes trout eggs into primary schools. The children get to look after them. We call these children our future stewards. And we had four schools from around here. We had Riverside Primary, Dalmarnock Primary, St Anne's Primary and St Francis Primary who reared trout eggs and released them here. It's essential going forwards that we need to keep our rivers, the Clyde and all the other rivers locally, clean and cold so that trout and salmon can persist in them. For a hundred years, until about 1983, salmon had been extinct in the Clyde. They started to come back of their own volition in the early 80s and we now know that they've recolonised something like 278 kilometres of river across the Clyde system. I've been rowing for 61 years. The history of any club is, is important. I started delving into the, the records. And there was a, a wealth of information from the early, early days of the club and right through to modern times. This club for me is a huge part of my life, to be honest. Always has been. One of the things that interests me is photography, and it has been for a long time. I've always had an interest in, in making sure that photographs were going up in the club, snapshots of people in the club. And I think at the time, I didn't think about it in terms of historical value, but you do realise when you look around the existing older photographs, that at that time they were snapshots effectively. But in a hundred years time, the photographs that I've put in the walls, they will become historical artefacts, if you like. And I think that's, that's quite important. One of the things the, the, the clubs have to think about is how this history then is maintained, but also how it, it starts to go down through successive generations of rowers. With the foundations complete and the building stabilised, the team began work on the roof. 25,000 new tiles, weighing in at a hefty 20 tonnes, were fitted over the spring of 2022. 
Slowly the building began to re-emerge from the scaffold. The repaired doors and windows were returned and reinstated. The crumbling balconies were rebuilt. A new flexible lightweight render system was applied to the exterior. Insulation and new heating ensured the building would stay toasty through the winter. And a platform lift, accessible toilets and showers and a new pontoon has brought the facilities up to modern standards for a wider range of users. On May the 14th, 2023, we celebrated the reopening of the West Boathouse, almost 118 years after it was first built. The event was a celebration and a thank you to the many individuals, organisations and funders who gave their time and resources to the project. It's amazing coming back into the club and feeling that the building is, is back to its former glory. It's really a rebirth. The building has just enabled so many people to enjoy rowing in the city of Glasgow and it's fantastic that it's going to enable so many more generations of people to enjoy rowing in Glasgow.